do that before we do that we obviously 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 have to talk about the new lineup just announced regarding Bergheim in general you know the deal you know I'm the kind of unofficial official unofficial official spokesperson for that flipping Berlin establishment and they have produced and published a January 2023 lineup and let's say it's one for the books there's this common um thinking in a little scene of people that love to go to Bergheim like I do that usually the best nights are usually the ones after the big event so it's after new year's eve that's after i think may day and then there's another one i think i forgot what the big one is but there's a few dates in the year where those are the kind of the big ones right where everyone i think the other ones i think of maybe gay pride or something what are the other but there's a common thinking around people that go there a lot is that actually you should suck off going to the big events because they're usually going to be rammed they're usually going to be crazy queues um you might be have to pay you might have to pay a little bit extra than you would do on just a regular weeknight and then also um it's going to be full of tourists that's usually the thing that people always say so always try and go the week or a couple of weeks after the big event because usually those are the times when it's basically quote unquote full of regulars or locals and you can legitimately get a better feeling or a better idea whether or not you like the club or not because that's how it should be presented like in that kind of you know um non-tainted form and i would tend to agree because for the most part when i was working in retail and i didn't really earn that much money i used to always go around january to let's say april maybe not april i don't know actually yeah january to april maybe start of april or the end of march were the dates i usually went and not because i was smart or because i knew what the dates to go outside of the flipping hot dates no i only did it because it was a time that i could afford to go especially on a retail salary where you're making like you know maybe you're making close to a thousand pounds a month sometimes it's less it's 900 minus your rent and all your living costs you're not really left with much so you have to make your money stretch as far as possible and the way i could do it was obviously to you know not go out the entire month before that and then just spur you know blow my whole load on that one trip but what you did get was the advantage of going and the trip prices the ticket for always so cheap like i think i just checked recently i'm not gonna check too much because i've got this weird um feeling that every time you check flights on Ryanair beforehand and you do too many inputs it notices it and then jacks the price up so you then you can but you know jump on and book it not sure if that's true or not but it's a little feeling that i have but when i checked last time for flights i saw flights in january that were especially now it's not even a month you know it's not even a it's probably over a month now until the dates that i'm kind of thinking of going so it's probably under a month time in, in advance and still i could find flights for like 40 pounds or something which is crazy because nowadays it feels like those 40 30 20 pounds right in there kind of you know european flights are long gone those days are gone you have to especially if you're going to go on the dates that everyone else goes you probably have to pay two for now to go so the fact that that's available is absolutely incredible regardless um but the lineup is absolutely crazy and definitely with those flights and you know with how affordable it is considering the cost of living nowadays this might be an absolute great time to go and to you know have a little bit of fun have a bit of boogie and come back feeling nice and bloody strong but from what you can see so far look here i've been just looking at it now there's an even ones for the six now on 21 quid which is absolutely crazy but from looking at this now january 2023 um you've got all the lineups are already released down there and then the ones i picked out the ones i'm kind of interested in trying to check it out are probably this weekend which is the what does it say here it's the 13th actually the 13th weekend which is Atello bar so Atello rama bar and bordello at parigi as you can tell it's mostly an italian you know i tell a disco type theme that which i'm all for because i absolutely love that type of music in general especially considering that i used to absolutely demolish and smash disco back in the day when i was playing that quite regularly so you know a common thing that you would always kind of jump to would be disco to kind of get the crowd rocking especially if you're playing in a random bar or like old synth pop or like itello disco there's always great ways to kind of get your regular schmegular person to kind of get involved and want to dance at an electronic party without feeling like you know you're basically smacking them over the head by playing some blow on that flipping 7 p.m not a good idea but regardless the flipping panorama bar um, line up here at Telerama Bar with Bordello at Par Parigi. How you pronounce that? It's got Anomonix playing live, I'm not too familiar with. You've got Juliella Goodner, who, no, Julie, Julilia, Julilia Gutierrez. Is that how you pronounce the name? Gutierrez. 
Um, you got Lau, who I know. You got Richelli Sogini, who I don't know. The Hack, obviously, that I know. And Vazenti and Saka, who I know. So that should be a good one just to check out of the night because I haven't been to a specific night where they only had Panorama Bar open in a long time. Um, usually when I go, I'm always going on a Saturday when both rooms are open, but it's quite nice to go on that one night where only Panorama Bar is open and see what the vibe is saying that way. So that would be pretty nice. And obviously, fashion wise as well, it's so a time to maybe put on some bright colors and not be wearing all black all the time. So that'd be a nice, gentle surprise. Then the following night, in the main Bergheim, you've got a pretty, pretty sick lineup. You've got Cecilia Tosh playing. You've got FR, JPLA. You've got Jacko Jacko. You've got Justin Perry. You've got Quazella. You've got my guy, Rene Wise, playing. So that should be awesome to go see him playing Bergheim because I think I think he played there a couple of times prior. Once that I was able to see the small bit of and the other few times. No, the other set, the other time, maybe it was free time. I'm not too sure. But I remember one time people saying rave reviews around it. And the other time I went, I was a bit off my head. So I only remember bits of it. But this time it's going to be absolutely lodged in the front of my flipping cranium because I'm going to go in there stone cold sober, listen to the set, absolutely go crazy and then get on it like an absolute sonic and hedgehog. Panorama Bar is going to have a, a, a Linka who I'm a big fan of, Gerd Jansen obviously who I love and see play many, many, many times here. Jennifer Cardini who I'm a big fan of also, even though I feel like sometimes she kind of cats Gerd Jansen a little bit. She's a little bit, you know, too similar in terms of style. I'm pretty sure they're both, I'm pretty sure she's also signed to running back if I'm not mistaken. Am I mistaken? Of that, let me quickly click here. Yeah, she is. Oh, no, she's not. My bad. She's on um, Correspondent. But regardless, um, <laughs> I do feel like she's got loads of similarities in style between them two. Um, but obviously, I'm not I'm mad at that. Masiana Pagagaro, of course, I'm, on, I'm, I'm eager to see him play again. Ogzon, I don't really know too well. Richie, I don't know. And Sedef Asi, I know because she's a resident. And then the rest of the nights are also really good. This one with, with DJ Spitz going to be quite nice. I've not, not heard of any of these people. All C, CC, Coco, Cobra, and Crypto Fauna. And DJ Spit playing DJ Spit. I'm a big fan of. This Saturday, the 21st, is really popular too. A lot of people are really excited to see Talisman play. Um, I'd be more, you know, interested to see Mary, Mary Yosef, Go, Yosef Koz, Kozkaya. Jesus Christ, these names. Because obviously she's more minimal. And obviously with that kind of resurgence coming up, that would be pretty cool to see her play. Chris Cruz playing in Pano Barbie. Nice. And Bockhammer again. Some of a big fan of Paramedia, who I'm a big star. I'm a big fan of Mike Starr, who I like, who I only find out through Whore again. That platform has definitely introduced me to a lot of amazing DJs out there. So that should be cool. CTM is happening there again. LSD, XOXO playing. You know, I'm just thinking about just now. Oddly. <laughs> I was thinking, no wonder. I've heard a lot of stories about people that live over there, right? Berlin, who say, oh... Um, they're over going out they just don't go out anymore and they just you know live a, a quasi adult mature normal sophisticated life where they don't spend their time you know crushing up kit on the flipping kitchen counter it makes sense though doesn't it looking at this because i just told you prior podcasts ago about, about the new year's eve to new year's day lineup which is crazy it's going all the way through i think the friday way to tuesday or something crazy like that then you've got whatever happens in November, whatever happens in October. It's like, it feels like to me, apart from the week that they take off after New Year's Eve or not, it's just a constant cycle of flipping events. So if anything, there's always something or always a distraction. And you feel like January is usually the time where people do New Year's resolutions. They do, you know, uh, commitment to, to sobriety, commitment to not doing drugs, commitment to not going out, abstaining from sex, abstaining from gluttony, whatever it may be. You're doing something to sort of give you a bit of a refresh and allow you to kind of go into the new year with some sort of focus but how can you if every single time you turn around there's some big event you're missing so there's a ctm in january there's just events happening in the beginning of january then there's something happening in feb because of valentine's all that sort of stuff then there's stuff happening in march heading into summer it just never ends so it does make sense now thinking about it why there's no real in between there's either you go out or you don't there's no like going out sometimes because eventually you'll get caught in the source um or you get so lost in the source not caught in it you get lost in the source and sooner rather or later you realize this the first of the month you've only got five euros to your name that should be a bit peak but regardless um ctm lineup looks really cool happy tears playing um you've got octa octa back to back with their stew which is always a superb back-to-back -back duo i think it's probably one of the best back-to-back -back dj performances out there because i guess they're actually friends and they're actually collaborators and probably practice at home you know together and stuff but whenever i see clips of them playing together they look like they're having a time of their lives and clearly 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 their styles suit each other really well so that's definitely something to keep an eye on 
Um, then on the other one, the 28th, you have in Baker and Rain Room, you have Alan, Alan Natter playing, Fatty Moham, Marcel Dietman, Monster, who are a big fan of that girl was brilliant, Nastia Rigel, Norman Nodge, SO. Then in Panama Bar, you got Kiki Lomo playing. Um, you got K- Kim Ann Foxman, who I'm a big fan of. He doesn't really get the props and the attention that she deserves, but definitely great. You got Omar, you got Usam, you got Partok, you got Russell E. L. Butler, who sounds like an author. You got Yesin playing. Then the following weekend, another CTM night, you got Audrey Chen and Hugo Quintka, Doran Sajer, Pierce, Porcy Mary, Stephanie Edgy, and The Body. But the interesting thing I wonder as well, because a lot of these CTM artists are usually people who are kind of, you know, outside of the popular sort of attention span of people. I wonder if a lot of those people that get to play there for CTM eventually end up getting spots on the main burger list, or it's just like a, one of those kind of weird cheat events where you say you can play, you say you play there, but did you really? You know what I mean? I, I wonder if it's one of those things. I'd imagine they're quite open to having people guys play, because I'd imagine a lot of people that work there are really plugged in and maybe have you know maybe there's a feed that goes through the main Bergheim floor panel of our up to the offices they have like an ability to listen to stuff in it as they're working so they don't have to listen to it bleeding through the walls maybe i'm not too sure but that'd be pretty cool if you came to play at a festival that had nothing to do with the main club they're just using it as a venue and then you also got you the chances to get in front of the people that booked the place and they end up booking you for the main slot that'd be pretty sick but yeah generally lineup looks amazing Cannot wait to go. It's definitely something that's on my list now. And it makes me far more happy and content that I'm not there for New Year's Eve because I was really, really hoping I could go. But, you know, say la vie, say la bloody vie.